What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this finally Monday. No, the dreaded Monday, July 11th, 2022, about 12.06 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe looks like a 1.5 in the area of Southern California. We have seen a little increase in movement out here along the North American plate and also just offshore into the uh, just to the west of the Cascadia subduction zone. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map showing some of that movement here uh, looks like a right right around the Gorda uh, ridges area just seen a 2.6 come in within the last hour uh, prior to that we've seen a couple earthquakes up here around the Blanco fracture zone and also down here in the Gorda escarpment so a little bit of pressure increases out here in the uh, area of the Cascadia far as inland goes uh, did see some movement over here in Nevada as well. 3.5 near Eureka. Also low activity down here in the Ridgecrest area. Looks like that's um, just north of the Garlock Fault Zone right here. About a mile or so north of there. Let's go ahead and bring up the all magnitude so we can see a little bit bigger picture of what's going on here. We'll get to this activity here in just a second. But I want to show some movement popping off out here in the desert of Nevada seen uh well a pair of earthquakes there 3.5 couple of them and some other twos and ones in the mix as well uh they're out there amongst uh, many fault systems of course a lot of mountain ranges and and uh some old fault systems and active ones as well out there uh, this activity is striking northeast of the warm springs area we have seen some movement out there in the past uh oh a month or so ago a little swarming activity uh, such as what we're seeing today so we'll keep an eye on it i think overall uh, that's a sure sign of some regional pressure here along the north american plate definitely when we see that activity stretching inland like that uh, movement around the ridgecrest area is noted just a little bit of uh, activity north of the garlock fault zone and a couple earthquakes here just to the south of the garlock fault shear zone which is this pretty well-defined feature uh, to the west of mojave getting a little earthquake activity within the last hour a 1.1 and a 1.5 pretty shallow earthquake activity out here at less than a kilometer uh, so 0.3 Gonna keep an eye on that area pretty closely there southern california further south some movement along the san jacinto fault zone and a one little lonesome earthquake out here around the brawley seismic zone with a 1.3 uh, further north what do we got here? One earthquake outside of Mount uh, Shasta. This one here was from, uh, looks like late last night. Let me see. I think we had another earthquake out here around the Mount Shasta area a couple days ago. Just a little small speck, a 0.9. But well, this one further south, a little bit bigger, 1.0. Again, south of the Mount Shasta area. Uh, let's see if we got anything being reported up here throughout the Pacific Northwest. A little activity around Mount Rainier. And one earthquake down here in the Mount St. Helens area. Uh, looking up north to the Alaska region, seeing some uh, movement. Very typical activity up there in the mainland of Alaska. And still seeing a swarm of activity. Uh, although this is older movement. This is from late yesterday afternoon. A couple fours in that area. We haven't seen any further uh, development here overnight or this morning. So a uh, little activity in Japan and through the Philippine plate. Again, this um, this movement here from last night, looking at the Big Island, a little activity on the southeastern region once again uh, near Pahala, and one earthquake out in the Loihi Seamount region. This one's striking earlier uh, with a 2.5. One earthquake up here around Mauna Loa as well, looks like a, a 2.0, but overall, general seismic activity seems to be calming down here in the Mauna Loa area. Uh, over the last seven days, things have been ramping up in a little swarm-like fashion around this volcano. Uh, but today looks a lot calmer in terms of earthquake activity on the map. Uh, still getting some deeper activity here in the Tonga region and the Kermadec Trench. Uh, a couple of those earthquakes down there below 500 kilometers. One earthquake upstream here, getting uh, some deep or uh, get some deep activity. Uh, also adding some stress up here to the subduction zone itself further upstream with a 5.0 at 10 kilometers. Uh, notice, <clears throat> kind of notice the activity we've seen here pick up overnight uh, and this morning time frame throughout the middle portions of the Middle East. We're looking at movement around Iran again in that area where we've seen some swarming. Uh, seen a, a 4.1 
overall things look like they're kind of picking up once again in this area of the world also around uh, the Greece area seen a 4.0 and even away in here we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit uh, looks like a 2.9 in the Kosovo area I'm surprised the USGS is reporting that 2.9 who who would have thunk who would have thought right uh, the Atlantic Ocean not a whole lot going on today looks pretty clear across the board uh, the South America region though and yeah there's at least one earthquake here from earlier this morning it looks like a 4.5 somewhat deep into the Peru Chile trench at 222 kilometers but uh, I think the big picture right now this activity along the west coast we got to watch uh, not a whole lot popping throughout the rest of the states a little activity that we've seen last night up through Illinois uh, and some movement it looks like being reported in the Yellowstone area let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone map here real quick see if we got any data coming back on I know last night we had some weird signals popping up. That's going to be these right here, and it's still kind of showing. It looks like there's a lack of data being reported every minute or so, and I'm not for sure why. Uh, just notice that it is consistent here about every minute. Uh, they're all equal in size. doesn't matter if there's data coming in or not. It's still registered here as a technical glitch on the majority of these seismograph stations across the northwestern corner of the park. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes in general, well, not a whole lot. A um, couple small spikes, it looks like here on this one, this is going to be a, a localized earthquake. But aside from that, things are calm, not looking active at all here at Yellowstone National Park in terms of uh, any earthquake activity. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Checking out the solar weather department. See, have we got anything changing today? Has anything kicked back up? Well, Looks like overnight we did see another, um, well, that almost looks like an M flare. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, kind of reached up into the M 1.0 uh, category. Since then, though, overnight in this morning time frame, it looks like uh, crackling with some C flares. Pretty consistent in that department. Uh, we are looking at a major increase in activity. Look at this. These guys raised up the X flare potential to 20% chance with proton possibilities around the 20% chance as well almost certainly and I kind of talked about this last night how we're you know when it's crackling with these consistent C flares that these other ones should definitely be elevated uh, it's a, normally a telltale sign of something about ready to pop or you know kind of like popcorn on a in a microwave or even on the pan you know the old-fashioned way things start getting sizzling on the Sun and things do pop and we get these solar flares and whatnot uh, but 60% chance of an M flare, I think that's good, and 20% chance of an X flare is noted. And this is all comes from, uh, let's see what we got. I know we got a couple new developments here that are growing rapidly. Uh, 3055, 3053 still pose a main threat because they are earth directed, and anything will be geo effective in terms of any flare or subsequent CME. Uh, right now, X flare potential looks pretty dynamic in 3055, which harbors a, uh, a beta class magnetic field, uh, looking at 80% chance of C flare, M flare at 40, uh, X flare around 15% chance. You can see the intermixing here of the fields are growing, looking pretty active. Uh, let's see here. And that's got the most chance for the protons as well. All these other uh, 3053 and 3056, a newer one, do pose a threat as well. But it looks like 3055 is our main one currently right now. Uh, and it, like I mentioned, it is growing. It's looking pretty rapid. Uh, and it's got a good possibility of sparking off something here, Earth Directed. So heads up. Uh, when we see these things light up like that, time to uh, take note. Anything, uh, like I said, will be uh, Earth Directed if it pops off. There is some further new development sunspot here above 3056 on the northeastern limb up here. It's not named yet. But it is pretty huge. It's looking, even from this angle, uh, it looks pretty dynamic. Here's a little different view of it. You can see kind of the uh, the um, the prominences, uh, prominences and the uh, these loops here, the, the plasma and stuff like that, just showing quite a bit of uh, of activity. Look at this here. I bet you this is raised up off the ground too, or off the off the ground, off the uh, surface pretty dynamic feature here so things are getting uh things are getting very active it almost looks like a little mini rope tornado but uh this whole this whole sunspot right here is looking pretty crazy this one here though 
That should be named really soon. What is it going to be? 3057, right? Is that right? Double check here. 3057 should be the name because we just had 3056 down here. This one's going to be the one to watch as well um, in the coming days after these guys move about. Pending they don't uh, spark us a good show. We'll see how it goes. Look at Looking like a G1 class storm on the 13th of July. Um... I'm pretty certain these are coming from some uh, coronal hole activity that had been facing us. Um, let's see here. Uh, quiet to unsettled levels are expected to prevail on July 11th. Periods of active conditions on the 12th. Uh, storm conditions on the 13th are expected in response to positive polarity CH uh, HSS influences. So we'll see... Uh, when is uh, that, again that's on the 13th these are the uh, UTC time frames here so it looks like it is going to be hitting around night time which is good news for the folks uh, that may want to see it uh, this one was put out today it looks like uh, newly assigned sunspot 3056 crackling with minor solar flares as it turns into view this is the southern end again um, yeah, I think we're going to see something uh, here real soon with this type of activity. Looking at the D, uh, D region uh, absorption prediction, DRAP map. This is where the radio blackouts would be uh, pending the flare activity kicks up. Uh, and these C flares are strong enough to uh, cause a little bit of minor minor uh, black radio blackout. Once you get these strong flares kicking in here, this thing will definitely... Uh, kick up into the red and cause a massive radio blackout at the higher frequencies and the low frequency range in the 30 to 300 KHC range navigation systems. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, we'll watch this pretty closely, folks. Things are getting uh, very, very interesting on the map, on the sun. Looking at the latest fire map here. Still got that big one burning down here near Yosemite. Um, it's way out there in the middle of nowhere. Of course, there are some beautiful trees out there, uh, some old trees, a lot of forest burning out there, and it looks like 2,340 acres with, look at that, 0% zero, zero containment. That is not good news. Here's the fire perimeter from the Overwatch area, uh, producing also some pyrocumulus clouds from the heavy smoke, and not a good deal. I'm not for sure why, uh, how this one started out here in the middle of nowhere again. But it is burning, it looks like, to the south area. South and west, it looks like. So, not not good news. Definitely not good. Up, up here in Northern California, <coughs> excuse me, not a lot going on here. Let me go back here to the watch duty. Some of these are put out. Looks like a little fire outside of Chico here near Hamilton City. It looks like maybe... Not for sure. Monitoring information. Canal Street and County Road 16 in Hamilton City. Looks like fire has been contained. It's probably a brush fire. Uh, no, thankfully, no major fires around me currently here in Northern California. Um, just that, just got that big one down south there in, in the uh, Yosemite area. I thought about going down there and checking it out. Doing a little bit of uh, uh, snooping around, I guess, to find out maybe what's going on down there. I tend to do that on fire season. Me and Missy Mimi's um, went out last year and uh, seen the devastation in the uh, town of Greenville and all the other communities that uh, got caught up in that big fire here in Northern California last year. It was a bad deal. But um, I'm going to watch this pretty closely if things develop and uh, this thing really starts to take off. I may head up there. The reason being uh, is just to find out a little bit of inform information on uh, what the fire is doing. Are these guys putting it out? Or are they just letting it burn? Um, that's kind of why I, I like to go into detail and find out what's going on for myself. They only provide us with a little bit of info on these sites and whatnot. But uh, when you're in there in person, uh, you have no, uh, you know, you, you can basically uh, look around. Uh, of course, you got to have uh, the press credentials, which me and Missy Mimi's have. That's how we get into this area. A lot of people are like, how are you getting in there? And, and we can't get in there. Well, it's, it's you know, news. News agencies have the um, ability to report what is going on here. 
um, to the public, and that's why I, I, I do these type of events here. But I am watching it pretty closely. It is in the uh, Yosemite Wilderness area. It sucks because it's a beautiful area up there, or up in the mountains, down from me. But uh, man, 0% containment, not a good deal. All right, guys, I am going to bounce out of here. Who do we have up in the channel right now? Purple Bullet, thanks for checking in. Uh, good afternoon to you, Purple Bullet. Looks like chat's pretty quiet out here. It's supposed to be 100, oh, check this out. It's supposed to be 110 uh, today here outside of Chico where I live. And uh, it's currently, let me see what the weather is right now. It's hot out there, that's all I know. Uh, it's currently 102 degrees. Uh, we do have a little bit of humidity in there, 26%, so it's making it feel a little bit warmer. A dew point around 61. But yeah, we're supposed to be 110 degrees today. Woohoo! That's a, that's a pretty good scorcher, not good. So I'm gonna probably stay inside all day and uh, I don't know, check on the garden every once in a while, see what's going on with it, make sure it's not welting out there, keep it watered. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. Uh, we will chat at you guys a little bit later on. Stay safe out there, everyone.